They can't stop themselves. Power crazed politicians pathetically poking their noses into our business, trying to take control of every aspect of everyone's lives. Hey, Rishi, why don't you stick your profoundly illiberal anti smoking plan where the sun don't shine? The dreadfully divisive disaster scheme to split the nation in two those who are old enough for cigarettes and those who are not. Born before 2008? Great! Here's 20 Marlboros. By all means, smoke yourself to death. Go right ahead. Born after 2008? If you even touch a gasper, you're breaking the law. So mad it can never happen. So insane it will never happen. Basic rule of politics. Don't copy the deranged queen of New Zealand, crazy old Jacinda Ardern. But copy her, our dear leader did with his preposterous proposal at the Tory conference. Why? No one was calling for it. No one was demanding it. And yet self-styled Dr. Sunak decided to take on the role of health fascist to the nation. Smoking is legal. By all means, let the government educate us. Make sure that we all know Benson and Hedges and deep fried Mars bars aren't at all good for us. In any case, who doesn't know that? But no two bit here today, gone tomorrow MPs should ever be able to force anyone to eat and drink anything. That's up to the individual, to the citizens of this great nation, as opposed to this week's current resident of number 10 Downing Street, whose responsibility is to his own diet, not mine. And don't tell me I have to be healthy to protect the NHS, because Britain is still just about a free country, and we all have the freedom to be unhealthy if we want to. We pay our taxes, we pay for the NHS, so if we we get sick, the NHS protects us, not the other way around. If you think I'm changing my lifestyle to suit our useless health system, think again. Clearly, the Prime Minister fails to understand that Tory administrations are supposed to be about small government, keeping out of people's lives as much as possible. But, but if you believe it's bad under Sunak, wait until horror of horrors, Keir control freak Starmer takes over. Look out, folks. Britain's going to be nanny state central on steroids. The Labour leader cherishes his bizarre plan to send experts into schools to teach kids how to brush their teeth. Why would he think they don't know already? Doesn't stupid Starmer appreciate that lessons in how to handle a toothbrush add up to a woeful waste of taxpayers' money? But here's the deal, folks. This is the view from the wonderful world of Keir's socialist pulpit, where it's the state's job to bring up kids, not parents, where mums and dads can't be trusted to show their children how to clean their teeth, where the power of the individual take second place to the power of the state. Is that the kind of country you want to live in? If so, you have two choices. Move to North Korea or vote Labour. You going to vote Labour, JJ? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to vote Labour. I'm going to really? vote Labour. Well, yeah, why I'm don't, don't you move Labour. to North Korea instead? <laughs> Wait a minute. Because your kid not to brush your Sunak teeth. is the one who's already saying he's going to stop cigarettes, right? Uh -huh. So he, either way, it's going to be North Korea regardless. So, oh, vote Labour. I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> he's just as bad as Labour. But, I mean, teaching children how to That's clean completely their normal, teeth. right? They're having kids, uh, having dentists go into schools and yeah. teaching. Not kids dentists, not teachers. Yeah, teachers. no. But yeah, but having having dentists do that once is fine. That, that's what happened when I was a kid in school. Okay. This proposal to have them. You go got in, taught how to teeth, teeth, brush teeth, your teeth in school that again. <laughs> you got taught how to brush your teeth. Yes, of course. Ting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like nice teeth. I like they are so, it's the only nice thing about you. <laughs> As a one-off, it's completely fine. Okay. But they're saying they want to have teachers doing that every day, having the kids brush their teeth for them every day, yeah. which I think is wrong. But most adults don't know how to brush their teeth properly. When I go well, to dentists, yeah. they're like, oh, you've got to brush it like this way, you. away from the gums. Of course gum. they do. No, they what about you, Esther? Are you any good at brushing your teeth? Well... Is that I'm, among your skill sets? Honestly, I, I'm glad you're wearing glasses because... <laughs> Yeah, you've got nice teeth as well. Listen, okay, here's the thing. I actually agree with Sunak more than Keir Starmer. Why? Because I think it's Ugh. so ridiculous to tell teachers who are already tired and have not enough hours in the day to teach kids how to brush yeah, their teeth. Yeah, well, that's teeth. striking. That's ridiculous. They're completely but, knackered. But the, the smoking thing, the smoking thing, here's the thing. I don't, I, 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 I'm a very liberal person. I think do what you want, but pay for the consequences. 
the NHS spends most of its budget on lifestyle related illnesses yeah. that have to do with obesity, alcoholism, and smoking. Yeah, suck it up. I don't think so. <laughs> Suck, it, Suck up. it up, but you pay for it. If you want to smoke, I you pay, pay for it. it. If you I don't, smoke, you, not enough. You treat me. Not enough. Because the weight No, no, no. I'm not doing, doing anything to help the NHS. Well, I'm, I'm Why sorry. should I? It, it can't, you can't Why have it both I? ways. But Why should I? Already, but everyone pays for it. So Come on. Pay well, no, by, by their taxes. You don't, you don't and pay. pay and, it's not yeah. proportionate to how much they take out of the system. That's my point. So what? No, seriously. I pay a lot of my money in taxes. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I'm healthy. Whatever. I think it should be, you know, I should get a tax break. How about this? You can smoke however much you want, but non-smokers get a tax break. Uh, no, yeah. don't, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. No, 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 because, no, because you want to no, incentivize because healthy behavior. because smoking is a legal activity. That's fine. You cannot be punished they haven't made for doing illegal. something that's legal. I get a tax break for No, you don't, healthy. then. But you absolutely yes, I do should. not. I absolutely what should. Is, you're some sort of communist. <laughs> I'm just healthy. Well, what's the matter with you? I'm just healthy with good teeth. I thought you be on my team. side. <laughs> JJ's on my side. I don't want that. If they legalized crack cocaine tomorrow, uh -huh. would you say everyone should be doing that then, Kevin? Oh, actually, no, you would say that. You would say, yeah, it. Yeah, do it. If do it's it. legal, you can do it. And nobody can make moral judgments about that. You can't tell me what to eat. You can't tell me what to smoke. You can't tell me what to drink. That's a free country. Can we make it more difficult for you to do those things, though, instead? Is that better? No. What do you mean, no? No, with, no you with, cannot. We're trying to prolong your life. We want you to live What's that? It's up to my life. It's up to me how long my life lasts. No. Not very long, <laughs> what is going on. Yeah, how many do you smoke a day? Yeah, well, actually, I gave up in about 1995, so uh, yeah. uh, I did give up. I used to smoke a so, lot. So why did you give up cigarettes? Because uh, they're because bad they're for not you. very healthy. Well, there you go. Exactly. This is it. Yeah, but it's not for the government to force me uh, to do something that is legal <laughs> or not to do something that's legal. Well, to, to be fair, it's still legal for you. It's just I mean, not legal really for the I mean, you really buy into this nonsense, Esther, that we have to change and adapt our lifestyles to protect the NHS? No, I actually, I think you should either I reform, think well, I think you should reform the <laughs> NHS. I don't, I don't think, you know, doing this is necessarily the best way. I think you should reform the NHS and give me, people like me, tax breaks. No, why? Yeah, yes, yes, that's because I don't, I don't use as much of the system. That's divisive. Yeah. No, it's true. Uh, but it's true. It's, right. I think it's, it's true. Right. And, I, and, I, and I don't use as much of the system because I choose to live a healthy life. If you want to incentivize... How do we prove you live a healthy life? I mean, <laughs> how can you get those tax breaks? Well, you get people saying, I don't smoke. Honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't I smoke. Don't. I think every year you have a body MOT done. And those body who are, MOT? Body MOT. <laughs> body MOT. Yeah. And those who pass the MOT yeah. with flying colours yeah. get less money. So, um, How'd it go, Doc? You need your yeah. brake pads. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, That's break. it. Your tyres need changing. <laughs> I'll tell you, my tyres need changes. That's for damn sure. Uh, anyway, enough of this nonsense. It is time now for a bad ad. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh, it's... Oh, I'm trying to give it up, but it's one of those nights. Oh, it's... Oh, it's... Oh, it's lemonade. <laughs> I, I remember class. those adverts. I, yeah. I do not. I remember those adverts. So it's like, you know, first of all, you're a grown man. Why are you going downstairs? You've got a fridge full of our whites yeah. lemonade, or any lemonade for that matter. You better grow up. Uh, it's not necessarily a normal thing to do in the middle of the night. Uh, so, but I suppose I have to say, here's to you, our whites lemonade drinker, because you can drink what the hell you like. <laughs> yes, you can. Also, you know, in moderation. You know who that guy is? That's Elvis Costello's dad. You're joking. Yes, yeah, really? you're joking. That's Elvis Costello's dad. There you go. You're... I'm useful. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> in, in sometimes, once and all. And who was the other guy? It was Ronnie, Ronnie Corbett. Corbett yes. <laughs> he was to basketball what you are to journalism. <laughs> uh, now, uh, uh, we are now going to go straight into mean tweets. Now, this is normally the section of the show where we look at some of the fan mail that I've received where they all start calling me a. <laughs> like and they think that I'm going to be crushed by that. It's like, hey, guys, I'm kind of used to it. Uh, but uh, no, this week I'm off the hook. Because it really? turns out that you two have received a whole load of mean tweets. Uh, let's have a look at them. Well, uh, this week I'm not in this section because nobody hates me at all. Very unusual. Uh, <laughs> but they really hate Esther and JJ, uh, so take it away. Well, I'll go first. Okay. Um, what a fool. 
JJ and this Yobi is <laughs> shouty, <laughs> me. arrogant, refuse to listen to an expert. Uh, of course, the bigger flaw with him is his stupid laugh. Well, I'm not laughing now, my mate. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. Who the flying f is JJ and this Yobi? This is really rude. Forget <laughs> it. Question. I don't care. Just let him know that if he's on, I am off. You can f them, mate. Right there. Done. What a Gun. That's me. That's me. You only got two. I got three. Three. I, it's I a never hat get trick. I a hat trick of horror for <laughs> Esther. Hit us. I never get me. Hit us with your horrific and, and tweets. And JJ rudely responded to this one. <laughs> As, Esther Craig, who <laughs> vinegar and <laughs> lemons. The, the woman is bitter. <laughs> and JJ responds, Esther will actually love that description. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember writing that. I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even. And then another person goes, Esther Kroku is indeed the new Piers Morgan. She's just as unhinged. Oh. Which is true. High praise. I mean, yeah. I, that's a compliment to me. I, I can and see then where the they're coming one, from. The last one, Esther Kroku does my nut in. She and her fellow shop jocks should pay extra tax for all the harm they cause to our mental health. Hashtag Jeremy Vine. First of all, I should be getting Jeremy who? Jeremy. Never Hashtag heard of what him. just happened yeah. to me. I should I should be getting tax breaks first of all for how healthy I am. But of course, this yeah, yeah. Mental health I, I, I do not. Well, you just I, the government you know what? That's true. I drive men crazy. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Ha! Uh, yeah. yeah, you do, but not in the way you. Think. <laughs> the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak every day in his office, number ten. Now, how can we help Esther Krakow today? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not all about you. You know, it's all about me. Actually, let's go to a real break. just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Welcome back to What Just Happened. What just happened? Uh, I'm still with my special guest, Esther Krakow, my useless guest, JJ, and a COB, uh, and a few thoughts from me on working from home. I don't like it much, by the way. You, you'll, you'll work that out as, uh, <laughs> as we go along here. Uh, working from home. Don't you love it? No, because I work from the office. You know, the place where my employers are based. The place where, since they pay me, they have a right to keep an eye on what they're getting for their money. And if they abrogate that right, more for them. Do the naive bosses who bought into ludicrous work-from-home culture really believe their staff aren't watching Netflix, taking the dog for a walk or enjoying a pint down the pub? If they do, I've got some swamp land to sell them in Florida. Now, a couple of unproductive years into the Skyvers charter, born in the grim era of the lockdowns that didn't work, we are finally realising what else doesn't work, working from home. Why? Because people working from home aren't working. All these companies now suddenly saying, get back to the office, get back to the grindstone. Why did you ever think that letting your staff allegedly do their job in their dressing gowns was a great idea? It was a terrible idea. Why didn't you know that? Human nature. When the cat's away, the mice will play. Not work. Bad for business. Bad for employees whose social skills die a death while they're all alone staring at their laptops. Bad for cities as once bustling centres of commerce turn into deserted wildernesses where restaurants, bars and sandwich joints no longer prosper. And particularly bad for manual workers, you know, those who toil in factories or drive lorries, who simply can't work from home. A cultural catastrophe of loners staring at their bedroom walls and a socially divisive system favouring white-collar keyboard warriors that effectively says to hell with the Blue Collar Brigade. That's a disgrace, a national scandal. Uh, notice how the left just loves WFH, because the left doesn't like people working at all, unless it's for the public sector, where working from home has turned the civil service into a chronically inefficient basket case, steering the country towards dysfunctional disaster. Watch the tumbleweed blowing through the wasteland of Whitehall and weep 
for those long ago glory days when government employees turned up at their desks and did what their bosses told them to. So why don't we get real, accept that working from home was a recipe for disaster that failed and tell all the Netflix watchers to turn off the telly and get back to the office. To hell with work-life balance. What does that even mean? Snowflake nonsense. Staff ordering their bosses around, demanding this and that and what they're prepared to do for their wages. No, if you don't like your deal, quit. And if your bosses don't like you ordering them around, they're in charge, you're fired. Get used to it. The new way will soon be the old way. Working at work wasn't broken. Why did we ever try to fix it? Why do you think that was, uh, Esther? <laughs> Uh, because it, you know, working just became a bit old-fashioned. Look, I actually, I, I, the thing about working nice, from home is, you know, the thing about working from home is, people argue that you know they're they're just as productive. No, and they're not. Obviously, that's that's listen, that's based on the people happy to pay their salaries. But I, for me, the issue with working from home is becomes so commonplace that we actually forget there's a whole section of society that have to be in work, like plumbers and construction workers and, yeah. and actual you know well, work fair. tradesmen and all of that. So I don't like the conversation about working from home as if it's the norm. Like you can sit there and fix a toilet from your laptop. Right, but you know, I listen. If employees are willing to pay their staff for it and they're getting what they need from them being at home, fine. Yeah, I've been fixing the toilet for the laptop. It's probably why my house is <laughs> like, uh, full of water. I'm sitting there going, "Why can't this?" Be? But I mean, it, that was one of my basic points. I don't like the social divisiveness of yeah. this. I mean, of course, there's a whole section of workers who can work from home because they're white collar workers. Uh, and so you could argue, well, why can't they do that? And other workers, blue collar workers, have to go to work anyway. Oh, that's a point, but I don't think it's very fair. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need working from home. We never did we need working from home. And all these people say, oh, people are much more productive when they're at home. That's, that's just a lie. Yeah, yeah. I guess because of the pandemic, we had to work from home, but it was a privilege yes. for people. So, it's not the law, yeah. right? So when people say, well, you know, I want to. I spend my money on holidays because I want to go on holiday. It's not a God-given right to go on holiday, and it ain't a God-given right for you to work from home. I think everyone should be back in the offices. <laughs> Absolutely, our high streets are crumbling. Our city centres. Going through London on a Friday, yeah. going to work, the place is dead because yeah, yeah. they want to work from home. And people now, Gen Z, they're part of this problem as well. Pesky bloody Gen Z. I love you looking at me. When you <laughs> yeah, <that>. bloody Gen <laughs> Z. Uh -huh. They now think people like you, uh -huh. your kind of people, now think, well. This is, this is what yeah. I want to do. And if you don't like it, I'll leave. Good, then leave then. I'd rather sack all the Gen Zers and get people back in the offices, back work when they need to be working. I don't agree with Rhys Mogg on many things, but on this, Rhys Mogg is you completely Rhys Mogg right. Like that, <laughs> yes. They call, it they call these people twats, don't they? Because they only Tuesday, work on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Lord Digby Jones, who used to be head of the CBI, he, he had a great scheme. He said, yeah, working for us, fine. Just ban everybody from doing it on Mondays and Fridays and see how many people don't like it. Like it. That's the point. Yeah. Is if you think that working from home is really about work, why have all these people embraced the idea of Tuesday, uh, of uh, Fridays and Mondays, so they can have long weekends? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah completely agree with you. Um, if you're back in the offices. I'm Full time. I wouldn't give them the opportunity of even to having be honest, off I think it a Wednesday. Be, I think it should be generational. I think if you are an experienced what? professional of like twenty what? years, you get to work from home. If no, that, if you job don't. Allows, no, but if you're if you're, no, you if you're a Gen Z, no, you absolutely. No, if you, I, I, this is you're an coming idea. up with some device. <laughs> this is an idea. But if you're a Gen you can do Z, it, but you can't. If you're a Gen Z -er and you're just starting out, I actually think there should be a rule for you to be in the office, and I think that's fair because listen, you're an experienced professional, right? Correct. If someone's telling you, oh, you can't work from home because you're late. Well, I've been doing what I'm doing for so long. I'm good at it, right? I need to be. The office more so because but I, I you, need to, you, I need to train can, the Gen Z. You can exercise that judgment for yourself as an experienced professional. But a young person okay. being being okay being, being in the I'll being in the home. workplace thinking they get to call it's the shots. Sorry, no. I work from home. I'm good with that. Well, but do you know what? Do you see my point yeah, though? Yeah, yeah. You know what you need to do to be successful in your job. A young uh, person calling the shots. I'm not coming in next week. Uh, uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but I, uh, I hate working from home as, as a philosophy. But uh, do you think you could start working from home? Just, <laughs> I would like you to work from home as Definitely. long as you're away. With, with a me. Zoom camera. <laughs> but I mean, I don't think anybody should be allowed to work from home because it's bad for business, it's bad for the country, it's bad for them. Yeah. I mean, st sitting in your dressing gown, staring at your laptop or your bedroom wall all day yeah. is uh, culturally extremely bad for you. People yeah. should be mixing with other people. Uh, I feel so sorry for the people who ran sandwich bars and little restaurants mm. and cafes around city centres. The whole economy, the whole social health of this nation is threatened by working from 
from home. And all these bosses and indeed employees, they're great for work-life balance, it's so productive. It's yeah. just not true. Yeah. It's just not true. Ask yourself, everyone, all of us, you know, if I haven't got the boss peering over my shoulder, I'm watching Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I'm down the park with the dog <laughs> yeah. waiting for a pint at lunchtime at the local. I mean, it's, just, it's human nature, as yeah, I said. Completely. There's nothing you can do about it. I that. can't believe you think that people should be able to work from home, Mister. No, I said if employers are willing to pay people who do that, that's that's their own prerogative. Well, that's, this, is about, this is about freedom to choose, but right? But employers are decreasingly willing to do it. They're the idiots going, oh, it's a new system. We're brilliant. Well, they're they're now going, listen, oh, my them. God, we're going broke. <laughs> of course they're going broke. If your workers aren't at work, they're not working. It's pretty damn simple. Time now, though, for another bad ad. That, that dates back to uh, the era when cultural appropriation was a way of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that advert will get in a lot of trouble now, but I grew up on that advert. Stylish advert, well filmed, but my problem with it is Turkish delight was absolutely inedible. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Oh, <laughs> God, it was disgusting. I like I've never it. I mean, I quite it. like Turkish Delight itself. You know, oh, you mean that particular? Yes, but the, okay, no, yeah. the, but the chocolate bar, yeah. it was what horrible. What is a Turkish Delight? It's like a rose-flavoured kind of gelatinous thing. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's a gelatinous thing. Yeah. If you go to Greek restaurants, Turkish restaurants, they get it. Yeah. No. Have okay. you ever been to a restaurant? <laughs> Well, thank you for your contributions on that important debate about uh, Turkish delight. Uh, it's, just, it's a debate that never gets tired. Uh, time for sport now. Yeah, you've only got the players before the break, though, you, Jamie. You've you can't keep blaming the player. You can't keep blaming the owners when players are performing this like that. Jamie, you've only got the players. Do you actually think Jamie, to yourself, Jamie? No, 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 no. You've only got the players before the break. Because no, but you're saying when you're a player, and I've been involved. We didn't win the league for thirty years at Liverpool, right? Just look at me when I'm talking to you. You didn't win the league for 30 years, Jamie, right? You've so got the players we went the through it. Wow. It's like you and me, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> On the talk. Look at me when I'm talking. <laughs> look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Jamie Redknapp and uh, uh, Gary Neville there yeah. going at it hammer and tong. I thought Jamie was going to hit him. Uh, well, listen, uh, I think we're gr uh, grinding to a halt, uh, which is a shame because this has been a great episode. And genuinely, thank you to my friend JJ Anderson. He is my friend, just. Uh, and of course, to the brilliant Esther Cracker. Communist. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a commie, but uh, we quite like her. We even like JJ. So thank you very much for watching. We'll be back same time, same place next week, right here on Talk TV for another edition of What Just Happened.